Hi, this is Greg. What's on the board here is a pocket money kit, the PMP9, the four-way traffic lights kit. Um, it's the same modified one that I've been showing before, other than what it's got now is the ability to lock the traffic lights on red in one direction and green on the other, um, based on an input. So near my place, there's a set of traffic lights that guard a railway crossing, and what I don't want on a model light railway layout is if a set of lights are in a similar position I don't want the lights going red yellow green while the um, crossing is flashing red or got barriers down and the like. So what I've been doing for the last few days is cutting code to try and get that to work um, nice and neatly. Other things that are on the board um, this is a demo board that we used at the model train show so there's some other stuff on here that's just sitting in the in the wings. Over here, this device here is the um, the lighthouse kit and this here is the sensor for a PMP-22, the laser train on track indicator. And the brown lead that you can see sticking in the back of the um, PMP-9 here is the input that will be honoured to lock the traffic lights on green in one direction and uh, red in the other. And all I have to do is occlude that um, laser receiver and away it'll go. Currently this is set to run on the second slowest mode that it can and it's running in UK mode so we get a yellow and a red together on the way through the sequence. And the lights over here are bank one, and the ones on this side are bank two. Uh, bank two's joined together with another set of lights here on bank two, and over here. The standard kit is pretty simple. It looks a bit different. It looks, uh, there's the circuit diagram for it, and it just runs around with whatever you've set the speed on the, on the left hand side. Um, the lights go round and round and pop out the outputs on the other side. The board looks a lot different to mine um, because mine's got jumpers and stuff to let me demonstrate it rather than the links that are hardwired on here to make it do a particular function. Sorry about the quality of that photo, I couldn't get it to come out nicely out of my printer but it did the job. Mine looks a bit different um, because I had to rearrange things to fit jumpers on and the like. Um, so mine is like this. Functionally it's quite the same other than the new features. Um, down the low, lowest left hand corner is a LED. Um, the yellow header here is the input for the uh, lock lights on particular aspect function. The first jumper down here is for a LED test, the second one is let me think the second one is for UK or continental sequence and the next three are for timing uh, which time you want the other difference that we've talked about before is that um, yes the pick connection to the um, driver chip is identical but I don't have the resistors on the board after the um, after the driver chip, the ULN2003. What I have is uh, the outputs of the bottom ones, bank two, coming straight out to these pins here. Then I have a 12 volt output. Then I have the top bank, the red, the amber, and the green coming out, and a 12 volt output above it so that I get banks of outputs uh, that have the same pin configuration. The test light board that sits on top of it is really crude but it's really simple. It has um, a female header down here that just pushes onto the pins on the board and it has a male header here so that I can bring them out again and connect other light boards. And then it has the lights for bank 2 and the lights for bank 1. So that's all very simple. Um, now I didn't have resistors on the board for the LEDs so each light board has its own resistors on it for the LEDs. This is the back of that same test board. Okay, let's have a look at how it works. Um, I probably occluded the thing there and it may be locked on bank to green now. So we're getting over to where bank one's going to start showing some colours and I'm going to 
put my hand in front of the detector and it's gone back to red straight away and it'll go up to green on bank two. If I keep my hand there, it will stay there for as long as that's occluded. Um, the time on this, I can't remember, it's about 15 seconds that it would stay there anyhow, so I'll stay here a little bit longer to see what happens when I take my hand away after uh, it's due to go back off again. And I reckon that should be about now. So it changed straight back to yellow and started going through its sequence again. Now I did a fudge that um, if it's red yellow on bank one and the sensor goes off, it'll flick back to red. My logic there was this is a model train layout and oh, it's meant for a model train layout. So the amount of time we, we've got to get the lights back to red red before a model train comes screaming in that might be only a couple of seconds away is quite short. So the light sequence gets accelerated um, to get back to red on bank one and then the sequence on bank two is at normal speed. Uh, to the same end, if the green comes on and I block it, I, it cuts straight away to try and um, come back. In fact, there's a minimum of 0.7 of a second that that green will be on before it comes back. So there are a couple of compromises there that are about model railways, but I thought it was much more important that we protect the crossing when the train's going across rather than um, we have a situation where we break the illusion of model railways that yes this looks right the crossing is protected and the train goes by and when it's gone um, the lights start going again. So that's about it I don't think there's um, anything much else to tell you about the operation of it um, if I block it any there is one other thing I can think of if I block it anywhere on the um, on the bank 2 sequence it will still remember that and um, operate again quickly on the other side. So we're green there, I'll let it go to red and I'll block it here and it'll go to red and come straight back up again. So we never showed people um, that were lined up to cross the railway line, a green signal or even a yellow signal. So those were the best things I could think to make it do. I have been working up a little bit of stuff to uh, turn this into a PCB mounted project and the rough workings are here. Instead of individual resistors I've just used a um, 5 pin network resistor. Um, this block down here is just all the connectors for the, uh, the jumpers. This is the pick, this is the ULN driver and these are the colours coming out in the orders of the connectors. And there's a power led down here. Up the top is the 5 volt voltage regulator uh, and a protection diode and the usual bits and pieces. And there's a mock-up of what the 3D board would look like. Now the package doesn't show the holes for the board correctly or it doesn't show the, the jumpers coming in for um, the inputs. That over there is the 2 pin header for the um, detector for lock bank on green and there's the outputs all labelled up um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Um, I suspect I'll be fiddling with the timings a bit more. The original timings in this were in seconds, and I've also changed them down to allow me to get down to ten tenths of seconds because the granularity is not that good when you're down at what is the minimum amount of time I keep a light on for, and you've got a choice between one and two seconds or one, two, or three seconds. So I'm still playing with the timings. But uh, like I said, everything's a compromise when you're down in model railway land instead of the, uh, the real world. Hopefully that was informative. Um, you can see what's going on. I've used up the last of the inputs on the PIC 16F676. What I did realise is it would, this project would work with a 16F630 because there's no analogue to digital conversion going on on this. But if you stick with a 676, you could actually modify it again to change the um, delay time for your lights by analog to digital conversion. And instead of having three jumpers, we could just put a single pot on there and wind the pot around for how long do we want it to hang around. Um, 
I am resisting doing that at the moment, not that I don't think it's a good thing, but right now this project is pin compatible with the previous versions of the uh, PMP9, so you can plug this into code this code in on an existing board and it won't it won't play up, you won't know the difference. The um, the shake of the camera there was thanks to my red border collie that just came in and gave it a nudge seeing what I was doing. Um, but yeah, the iPad seems to be doing this okay. Thanks guys. Uh, please give us some comments as to anything more you'd like to know about this uh, or whether you think these are worthwhile. I have had some feedback and I've tried to incorporate that to make these a bit better. And that's about it. Thanks a lot. Bye.